All right, folks, in this video, we're going to show you how to add pictures into your sketch models and trace them and also scale them so they are appropriate size. Uh, to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and just start a sketch choosing the uh, XY plane here. And before I get started, I'm going to go upload my picture. Now, the picture that I choose, you can, you can pick, pull anything down. It could be a picture that you've taken. It can be a picture that you've downloaded, uh, 2D flats. So I'll go pick one out. It's pretty easy. Uh, we'll use we'll use the Millennium Falcon. How about so? Step one: I'm going to go up to Insert, and I'll insert a canvas um, so that we can actually have the image on there. So I'll click on this, and it pops up, and it see it says all this. I'm going to insert from my, and I'm going to pick out my uh, pictures files, Millennium Falcon. And it's a JPEG image. I think PNGs will also work, but JPEG works just fine. I click it, and it says the face. I'm going to choose that surface I was already on. And then you'll notice it appears right there, and I can move it around. Now, don't worry about its size at this point in time. The fact that it comes in really small, you might need to zoom in so you can see it. But I'm going to place it about this location. Hit OK. And so there's my image. Nice little quick image of it. But the problem is, you'll notice that if this is the 25 millimeters, and this is pretty small. And let's say that I want the overall size of the Millennium Falcon that I'm about to extrude to be roughly 75 millimeters from one side to the other. So we need to calibrate this image for true size. So here's how you do it. You're going to go over to the canvas. You're going to right click on it. And let's see, we'll actually open it up, sorry. Open up the canvas. Expand it, I guess. Right click on it and say calibrate. First thing it's want you to do is go and click on two points of your object. So I'm going to zoom in real close and I'm going to click right here. It's a nice central point. And I'm going to go over and click the other side. It's a nice central point. And you'll notice it creates a dimension. It says, okay, from right now, currently, the distance across this image is 11.5. I'm going to set that to 75. Hit enter. And my image is now scaled up such that the overall size of it is 75 millimeters from this point to this point. And that's a great way to scale objects, especially if you're working off blueprints or you're trying to recreate some blueprints or drawing from blueprints or drawing some from outside. You can actually scale your image to match the dimension it's supposed to be. This is also a useful trick if you're using things like Google Maps because they provide a scale. You can scale it to real size. So at this point in time, it's just a matter of tracing. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not going to spend the amount of time that I would if I were really doing this, but I'm just going to kind of round this, maybe come to here. And you'll notice that I'm going to zoom in real close. I'm going to go to that point, and I'm going to stop. I'm going to come over here, draw a line here, maybe there, 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 and there. And then I'm going to come back and use an arc to fill up portions of it, maybe. I don't know if this is the best choice to, of to do it, but you know, it's okay. So about right there. And maybe I'll just come along with another line and draw it from here to there. I could go around all the way around the object and trace it if I wanted to, but I'm just going to do this pretty quickly. And if you want to do a really quality one, that's what you should do. You should go all the way around, clicking on it very slowly, very close together. And I'm going to do it right there. Okay. <clears throat> Especially if we were talking about the, the front end of the craft, I would go zoom in real close and say click on that. And you, the slower you go, the better because you'll find that auto or fusion will want to um, imply certain parametric modeling re restraints that may not be good and it has the tendency to do less, makes less mistakes the closer you are to your object in, in question. And so I would go on through and I would click around and, and trace around. If you want to get rid of high detail, you could. I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and jump to here, there, come across. Again, you'll notice that I'm taking my, I'm making sure I'm not clicking too fast because it'll make wrong assumptions if I click too fast. And zoom in and there. Okay, at this point, my cross, you see how it lights up that way? It means that I have closed my loop. I've got that one. I hit finish sketch. I hit extrude. Click 
click on that and then I come down and click on this and then I say we're all good distance we'll just say that it's going to be I don't know 25 maybe and hit OK turn my canvas off over here and then you can see that I have created that that's way too thick right click on my extrusion change it back let's say 15 that's a little more proportional maybe even just down to 10 yeah that, that works that looks a little better and granted I could actually start doing some real modeling at this point if I wanted to but that gives you the idea of how you actually can insert an image and calibrate it so that it is just the size you want it to be. Again, just go to insert, tell it to insert a canvas. Once you have it, expand the canvas, right click on the image and hit calibrate while in sketch mode. All right. So I hope you found that pretty handy and uh, we definitely do. We use it all the time for like measuring things or when we're creating existing drawings or recreating blueprints or parts from blueprints. It makes it a super efficient process. So hopefully you found that handy. We'll see you later.